Hey guys, it's December 15th, 2023. I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and today is our last live stream of the year, but it's gonna be an amazing live stream. I'm so excited to show you. What I'm gonna be showing you today is all the quilts that I completed in 2023. And when I show the quilt, I'm gonna tell you the name of the quilt, the designer of the quilt, where you can find the pattern, what fabric I used, the size of the quilt, as much detail as I can so that if you want to recreate some of this, you can. And I want to give a huge shout out to Teresa and Kenna because they worked on the binding on a lot of these quilts and Teresa also assembled some of the quilts. So even though I'm showing you all these quilts, I made all of the blocks, but not I did not assemble all of them. So I wanna give credit there. And I do wanna let you know that we're having this huge RFL giveaway. So we're giving away 60 spools from our thread wall. They're all 50 weight, they're just assorted colors. And if you want to enter to win, you will go to the Jolly Jabber blog and all the information is there on how you can enter and it's totally amazing. And we're gonna have uh, 60 winners. So that's gonna be awesome, 60 winners and each of those gets thread. So we're gonna jump right in and of course, if you have any questions about any of the quilts, if you have any, so basically I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna try to go slow, but if you have questions, I will answer them at the end. I'm gonna try to go through so I don't miss anything as I go. So this is the first quilt. This is called Socialites 2. So this is Socialites 2 pattern by Fat Quarter Shop. It's a completely free pattern and each of the blocks is an individual free pattern that are in three inch, six inch, and nine inch sizes. And there are videos on our channel the playlist with tutorials for the blocks is called Socialites 2 Sew Along. And what I did is in that sew along, I did some three inch blocks, some six inch blocks and nine inch blocks. So I put together a Kimberly's finishing pattern and I used the Dwell Collection by Camille Ross Kelly for Moda Fabrics. I used the background from the collection. The crosshatch is half inch wide the binding is from the collection, and then the setting, some of these setting fabrics, and the backing is from the Sunnyside collection because once I finished, the Dwell collection was sold out. So this is a mix of Dwell and Sunnyside. It was quilted by Maggie Honeyman, and I'll show you the back. And on this one, I just took one of my labels, added probably two inches, folded it in, and just put that in the corner. And sometimes I do that with my labels where it's not quilted in. If you have a really tight quilting, sometimes it's hard to get that label to not scrunch up. So this is Socialites 2, 51 inches square by 51 inches square. All the patterns are free on Fat Quarter Shop. This is So Scrappy Spools by Lori Holt. So this is 72 by 90. This is a paid pattern. It's available either as a paper pattern, paper booklet, or as a PDF designed by Lori Holt. For this one, I use the Calico Fabric Collection, and the spool fabric is from the Calico Collection. This background right here is C747 Cottage. My sashing and my border are the same. So, this part and this part are the same. This part is different, and then you can see that Teresa put together a scrappy binding and when you're doing scrappy binding you can either join horizontally or on the diagonal 
or straight or on the diagonal, I guess is a better way to say it. So she did mine on the straight, and this is one of Lori Holt's wide backs, which is 108. And this was quilted by Maggie Honeyman. And we're gonna look at the back. So this is kind of like a Baptist fan pantograph. And I had an, um, a really big label and I've had it for years. And so I thought, well, what a better way, just put it into a um, block and put it on the back. And this one, what, what we did is we did the 108 and then we made the block and then we just used the, um, what's that tool called? Hot hammer and then hand sewed it down and then it got quilted on top of. So that is so scrappy spools. This is Barn Star Sampler by Shelly Cavana. And we'll kind of move it around so that you can see all the blocks. So this is Barn Star Sampler by Shelly Cavana. I made it exactly like um, her pattern. It's 80 by 100, so it's really, really big. I used a mix of Sun Washed Fabric by Corey Yoder and Simply Delightful by Sherry and Chelsea, both Moda Fabrics. The background right here is the 20708-36. This one is probably my favorite quilt from the year. This binding right here is from Simply Delightful Collection. And then on the back, I put a mistake block on the back. And Maggie, oh, jo Joanna Marsh quilted this one. So this one was a mistake block. I talked about it a little bit last week, but basically I just pieced it into the backing and I just threw a label in, super cute. This one I would say was probably the hardest quilt to do for the year. And I, it's probably my favorite quilt of the year. And the reason why is I love stars. And so this is just a mix of stars it's definitely challenging. It was fun to do the fabric placement. It was fun to use triangle paper and square and a square paper. It was just really fun. So hopefully you guys joined me along with Barn Star Sampler by Shelly Cavana. It was super fun. The next quilt is the Bountiful Charity Quilt by Fat Quarter Shop and Corey Yoder. This one is 64 inches square, and this is actually Teresa's quilt. I auctioned my quilt to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and we have uh, fabric requirements, free patterns on our site. We have free video tutorials available on our channel, and we have a playlist that's available. And we raised a total of 130 $13,984 for Make-A-Wish this year. The fabric is Sun Wash by Corey Yoder. And I sewed mine exactly like the kit. This one again is Teresa's. And mine was quilted by Maggie Honeyman. And just keep putting your questions in. I will answer them at the very end. This one is the Triangles on a Roll Quilt Along by Fat Quarter Shop. So this is Triangles on a Roll Quilt Along by Fat Quarter Shop. You need the book and then the free inserts. So these, um, the book has the instruction for the block and then the triangles on a roll quilt along pattern that's an accompaniment, accompaniment to it is on our website. I use the Fruit Cocktail Collection by Fig Tree Fabrics. 
the background is from that collection and the binding and the backing are from that collection. Let's kind of show the left and the right too. Okay. So I used that really dark blue on the back. And this one was fun because it's bigger pieces, so it got to use up more of the fabric. And then the back. I just put a fruit cocktail piece on the back, and you can see the quilting on this is more of a, of a, a it's kind of a swirl, but it's, it's oblong and quilted by Maggie Honeyman. And my label I put in the corner. This one's really fun. This one I forgot about. This is the Jolly Bar 4 Quilt Along. It's 66 by 84, and so you need the Jolly Bar 4 book and then the accompanying free um, info to go with it. It's 66 by 84. This is the Simply Delightful collection. I use the background from the collection. I used Bella Solid as this gray right here. This is 9900-128. The binding and the backing are also from the collection. Quilted my Maggie Honeyman. And then I'll show you the back. So the back, the information on this block is also on that free insert. Oh, live stream. So basically I just took half square triangles that were left over from the corner squares, trimmed them to three and a half and then they finish it three inches. So all of these are just leftovers from the quilt. And my label is right here. I just made a half square triangle and quilted by Maggie Honeyman. This is Summer Picnic designed by Susan Aki. This one is 70 inches square, and the pattern is from Susan Aki's Summer Memories book. I used an assortment of Minikin Simpson fabrics. So I just, you know, I collect by designer, so I just use pinks and reds for the outside of the baskets, light blues for the inside. And this background is actually a Camille background. And this, um, this fabric right here is from Sunrise Side by Minnick and Simpson. This is from Isabella by Minnick and Simpson. This is Isabella by Minnick and Simpson. And then I'll show you the back. Basically, you can see that I've mixed Minnick and Simpson fabrics, but I've also, the background is a Camille background. And then this one, we put the label right here, same thing, where we just add it and so mix of uh, mostly Minnick and Simpson fabric. And that's, this is when your stash comes into play and becomes uh, very essential when you can find little scraps of fabric left over that you can put into a quilt. This, oh, and the quilter on that was Maggie Honeyman. This is the Spools Mini Quilt by Thimble Blossom. It is uh, 15 by 15 and three quarters. This is a paper pattern by Thimble Blossoms or a PDF pattern. So these rectangles right here were squares from 2023 scraps. It was, this is one of my many scrap quilts. I used a background fabric by Camille. I used the Blossom Collection by Riley Blake for my spools. I used a binding that I pulled from my stash. It's been long discontinued. 
and I used dwell fabric on the back and put my label in and Teresa put a sleeve, quilted sleeve, and if you would like to have instructions on how to put a quilted sleeve on your quilt, you can visit the Jolly Jabber blog, and she did a tutorial there on how you do that. And this one's really cute because it's, it could really go on any table. It could go on a big table, small table. It could hang off a table. It's very versatile. This is Threadbare by Thimble Blossoms. This is 76 inches square, so really big, and this is one of my scrappy quilts. The pattern is Threadbare by Thimble Blossom, available as paper or PDF. It's upside down, but that's fine. You just can tell because of the pantograph. So I took five inch squares from my 2023 scraps. So you will see when you're looking at this, you know, you'll see a Camille fabric, Vanessa fabric, Lori fabric, Brenda Riddle fabric, Minikin Simpson fabric, Sweetwater fabric, Corey Yoder fabric, everybody's fabric. Oh, and my label is right here. Let's turn it around. This is the last quilt that was done for the year, right? Okay, this is the second to last quilt. So this one, what, what we did Teresa did the layout and she decided it would look best with red in all four corners. And so we put the quilt label right here. So it would be in the quilt top on the front. We have a YouTube video on how I started my color placement and layout. And then the back is from, this is a B Vintage Fabric by Lori Holt. The binding is the B Gingham fabric by Lori Holt. My spools is from the Beyond Bella collection. And the gray is the white on white from the Blossom collection from Riley Blake. So you can see this is all scrappy. It's, you know, Moda, Riley Blake, it's all mixed. And I really wanted the, uh, I didn't want something too dark on the outside of this because there are so many solid primary colors. So the reason I picked this binding is because it would be subtle, but I also wanted red and white on the back. And I love this fabric and was trying to find a place to put it on the back of something. So that is how I picked my binding and my backing. The quilter on this is Maggie Honeyman. This is Sunny Patches by Corey Yoder. This is 69 inches square. This is a completely free blog. This is a completely free pattern on Corey Yoder's blog. So all of the patterns for this can be found at Coriander Quilts. This one's 69 inches square. I use Corey's Sun Wash Collection by Moda Fabrics. And so um, all of this fabric is from that collection. And I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see how I put the board, the, sorry, how I put the label in the front. So I put my label as part of this block right here. And I did use a, I think I just colored, followed her color placement exactly. So I just did whatever she did. I just copied it and I didn't really have to think. And I, you do end up with, I think, two leftover blocks. And I think I have that saved somewhere to do something with later. But this is all sun washed by Corey Yoder and fabric placement. I just did exactly what Corey did. Thank you to Susanna, Susanna Pasterik, Pasterik for the super chat. She says, Merry Christmas to Kimberly and crew. Maggie Honeyman was the quilter. And just remember guys, I didn't do all this myself. Teresa and Kenna helped me. So this is uh, lots of people. This is the Vintage Kite Quilt by Lori Holt. I love it. 
So this one's 64 by 76. I'm going to flip it. This uses two packs of the six inch vintage kite foundation paper by Lori Holt and the vintage kite free pattern on Fat Quarter Shop. It's 64 by 76. The fabric is all B vintage. This is C747 Alpine. And one thing that I did different than Lori's layout is on her layout, she used a lot of different backgrounds. I just used one background. And then I used the same background here as my inner border. And then I used um, a different middle border and a different outer border, all from the B Vintage Collection and used um, these. And this is, a, um, this is a wide back. And I'm gonna see what I did on the back because I don't remember. I'm not sure I did a label on the back. Oh, I did right here. So, you know, sometimes bottom left, sometimes bottom right, just kind of wherever. Quilted by Maggie Honeyman. And um, this one is, I don't know, it's just really fun. I love all the colors in it. Here is called Riley Blake Block Challenge 2023. You can find all of the free block patterns on Riley Blake's website and you can find the um, Lori Holt layout also on Riley Blake's website. Completely free pattern. This one's 27 by 93 so this could be used as a big farmhouse table runner or a bed runner. I use the Calico Fabric Collection by Lori Holt and Riley Blake Fabrics. The background is 12857 T rows. The binding and backing, well, the binding is also from the Calico Collection. And the backing is a wide back, one of Lori Holt's wide backs. And uh, what I did was I cut it where the words were going this way because I thought it'd be pretty if you ever wanted to hang it off of a, like hang it off of a um, fireplace, your words would be going, I don't know if this is vertical or horizontal, but it would be going that way. And then I added a quilt label to the back. And on that quilt label, I just used, you know, something left over from the front. I did want to point out, I kept the bl blocks exactly how Lori Holt colored them. So this one was really easy because I just looked at Lori Holt's blog and um, her website and just whatever she did, I did, which made it super easy. And I love the busyness of this background. It's a little bit busier than I normally would do, but um, it looks really nice. And that one's 27 by 93. Quilted by Maggie Honeyman. This is the Love Note Free Quilt Along by Fat Quarter Shop. So this is designed by Jocelyn, completely free pattern on the Fat Quarter Shop website. It's 20 by 24, and it was to celebrate Valentine's Day. The fabric is Be Mine by Janet Wecker Frisch for Riley Blake Designs. And I just sewed mine exactly as Jocelyn designed it and we have a free pattern and i just did i think i did this in a video right i don't think so i think it was just a free i think i just did it free so i just copied exactly what jocelyn designed and on the back we put a uh, label in the middle and then again you can follow the quilt sleeve tutorial on our blog for this so it's easy to hang and again love note is the name of the pattern. This is the Calico Quilt Seeds Pumpkin Table Runner. 
So on this one, I took the Calico Quilt Seats pattern, I purchased that, and then I wanted a table runner that would just have pumpkins going across. So Lori put together a free pattern for the setting, and you can get that at Fat Quarter Shop. This is 24 by 70. And just so you know, you could use this with any of her calico quilt seed blocks because they're all the same side size. This is the Calico Collection by Lori Holt. And I use background from that collection. The border is from the B Plaids collection, but everything else is calico. And on the back, we put the label in the center. The quilter on this is Maggie Honeyman. And if you notice, when you're looking at my quilting, you're gonna see my quilting is super, super tight and just very compact. And that's the way I prefer my quilting. I'm super picky about it. Um, and so my quilting, you can always tell if it's my quilt when we're showing stuff on live stream because most people don't do this. Um, and Maggie Honeyman also quilted this one. And that's a trend in my quilts um, that, you know, you might, you might notice. This was my low volume economy quilt. So this is one of my scrappy quilts. It took all year. And I used the six inch economy quilt block paper. I, it's 67 by 81. And what I did is from each collection, it's used twice in this quilt. So. I'm gonna find two that match, that are on the screen. These two. So I basically use the same fabric in the center. And then for this square, I used uh, four different fabrics. And then this one, I used four different fabrics. And so, and then you can just see, I put them together slightly different, but it used up a lot of my low volumes. I tend to, another trend you're gonna see in my quilts is you're not gonna see a lot of low volumes in my quilts because I personally have a hard time coloring them. I think, I think Lori Holt and Camille do a great job coloring low volume quilts. It's something I struggle with. So I thought I should still use mine. So I made this and I used 80, um, 80 blocks, eight across, 10 down. This is cut one and a half, I think, let me look. And then this is cut at five and a half inches on the border. And so, like I said, this has since, it's got 40 different collections in it because it's got 80 blocks, two blocks from each collection. So it's got Moda fabric, Riley Blake fabric, um, all kinds of fabric in it. Now this, is uh, Riley Blake. This is Robert Kaufman Worker Chambray Light Blue. And so I put that on the front because I really needed something. It was really hard to pick something for this. I changed my, my, um, changed my mind on it quite a bit. And it took a lot of laying it out, trial and error to see what would work. We ended up putting, um, a Camille fabric on the binding and the, I really wanted to do the chambray on the binding but it is more of a linenish fabric and so I just didn't think when we turned that over and we had to stitch it down um, it would be hard to do so we went with a Camille fabric and then the same thing on the back I did the label but the center square right here I used a label and this one was put on after it was quilted so you can see sometimes the labels on before Sometimes it's on after, sometimes it's in the corner, sometimes it's in the center. One thing that I did do on this is all of these are length of fabric. You'll never see in one of my quilts like a, a joined border or binding. That's like a OCD thing I have. And this one is a Christmas present. Quilted by Maggie Honeyman.
Okay, this one you guys have probably just finished also. This is the very last one we finished for the year. So yesterday, Teresa finished binding this at two o'clock in the afternoon. So this is a Quilting Life Block of the Month by Sherry McConnell. If you go to the Quilting Life website, which is also a blog, everything is free on that website. And it's the Quilting Life 2023. So what I did is I made my blocks 12 inches I did a setting from the Vintage Christmas book called Christmas Eve. So I used this setting and you can see this is four by four. I did three by four. This is five by five. I did three by four. So you can change patterns if you're just creative. Mine came out to 56 by 70. I cut my outer border five and a half inches wide. The fabric collection is Berry Basket, and this skew right here is Twinkle. Those are both by April Rosenthal for Moda. And I love the gray. And so like I said, my border, everything is from Berry Basket except for this right here. And then my backing, I, I love to do big, big stuff on the back, florals on the back. And we'll see if we did a label on this one. Okay, we're gonna add one later. I think we forgot, because it was so last minute. Um, now this one, I wanted to kind of talk about a new trend that I am doing, not trend, new, new thing I'm doing in my quilts. I have found that a lot of quilts lately have white everywhere. They're just like, when you look at them, there's just white everywhere. And so I don't want my quilts to be so white that when you look at them, you get lost. So what I've been doing, and I will be continuing to do in several of my 2024 quilts, because you know, I've already started those, is in my blocks, I'm putting two different backgrounds. And that way, when you look at it, there's more movement. And so that's something that um, you're gonna see me doing a lot of. That was quilted by Maggie Honeyman. This is the Fruit Medley Runner by Joanna Figueroa. So Joanna, a fig tree quilts. Now I changed mine a little bit. This is the Fruit Solid book. All the blocks instructions are in this book. We wanted a table runner, so she did a free table runner pattern for us for the setting. Uh, you can find it at Fat Quarter Shop. This is 17, mine is 17 and three quarters by 79 and a half. I use the Fruit Cocktail Collection by Fig Tree Quilts. Uh, now, what I did to make this work for me is on my leaves, you can see I did the, the direction of the stripes differently. So that's what I did here to kind of mimic that. And my table runner, I made this longer and this shorter. And what I did is I made, like originally, it was really a lot bigger. Sent it to Maggie, she quilted it. I brought it back home, put it on the table I'm gonna use, put some pins where the table ended, chopped it off, and then added my binding. So this is custom in the fact that I made it, but I made it fit my table. Quilted by Maggie Honeyman. And see how tight this quilting is, I love it. And then this one, we put the, we put the label down here at the bottom. Now this goes along with that. This is the quilt from the book. The fruit salad book. This one's 56 by 66. It uses the fruit salad book. I also use the fruit cocktail collection. Now, one thing that I did do differently is all of my blocks are from the fruit cocktail collection. But all of this right here, and this, which is your sashing, are from my stash. So this was the perfect opportunity to pull from my fig tree fat stash. I have a ton of it. And so you can see some of it's darker, some of it's lighter. 
but it adds dimension to the quilt that it wouldn't have otherwise and then it makes mine a little bit different i did keep the fabrics the same as joanna had and i did that same thing where this stripe goes this way and the stripe goes this way and you know it's hard for you to see that because the quilting is so dense but that's what i love and then as jordan's pulling it you can see you know you can just see the difference in the so i tried to space out um you know light and dark so that it wouldn't be so noticeable and again everything is length of fabric and one way that i do length the fabric is i cut always cut my length of fabric first because then I can get my subcuts after. And then on the back, I put another blue. You'll see a lot of blue and white on the back. And then the same exact label on the back here. This quilt is called the Evergreen Mystery Quilt Along by Fat Quarter Shop. This is a completely free pattern. So you're gonna see, we, we're offering you guys lots of free patterns. Designed by Jocelyn, it's 31 by 37. And we have a playlist of all of our video tutorials. It is called Evergreen Christmas Mystery Quilt Along. And this one uses the Favorite Things Fabric Collection by Sherry and Chelsea from Moda Fabrics. I just used exactly what was called for. And this is the white on white from the collection. And you see a lot of Baptist fans. One thing that we do when we send these to the quilter, this one was quilted by Maggie Honeyman, is Teresa sends me ideas for quilting and half the time I pick this. I think I drive her crazy with that, but I just love it. And you'll notice on the back, we use leftover layer cake squares because it was a layer cake friendly pattern for the back. Or you could have just saved these and put a normal fabric on the back. You can do whatever. And what I wanted to show you is, this is not a Christmas collection. This is Favorite Things by Sherry and Chelsea. It had lots of other colors. It had blues and greens and I don't know, it just had lots of other colors. And so you can make a quilt Christmas by just hand selecting your fabrics, which is what Jocelyn did. This is called Haunted Halloween. It's a free mystery quilt along by Fat Quarter Shop. 31 by 32, designed by Jocelyn. And the same thing, we have video tutorials to go with this. And that is in the playlist called Haunted Halloween Mystery Quilt Along. This fabric is from um, the Halloween collection by Urban Chicks from Moda. I just made mine exactly the way Jocelyn designed it. And this one was quilted by Maggie Honeyman, and I think you're gonna be able to see the quilting on the back better. Maybe not. There are little pumpkins. Yeah, you can see it right there. So little pumpkins, super cute. And then this, um, we just put it on point, put it on the back, and I love the little ghosts. Now this is what you call a cheater quilt. This is a panel by My Mind's Eye and Riley Blake Design. The fabric collection is called Land of the Brave. It's literally a panel that came just like this. This is a panel, I didn't sew anything. All I did was cut it out and I sent this to Maggie Honeyman And then we pieced the backing, put a border on the, the label and put that on the back. And I picked a white so that it wouldn't distract from the lines of the flag or the stars. And all I did was send it to Maggie. She quilted it with some waves. And you can really see those waves here. Put binding on it. And then this is going to be probably a table runner or I could hang it from, this is something where you could hang it like this from your fireplace. Like you could put a candle, like a candle here and here to hold it and it could just, just straight down from your fireplace. And this one's 35 by 42. 
This one is the Moda Love Charm Pack Quilt. So this has been a free pattern on Moda site for years. And again, it's called Moda Love Charm Quilt. And it uses charm packs. And I changed mine a little bit. And mine is 32 inches finished. The quilting is by Maggie Honeyman, super tight. And I did a members only video on this. And basically, um, the video is called Moda's Moda Members Only Tutorial Charm Pack Love. And I took the Beyond Bella Charm Pack, put it with a Beyond Bella white on white, made my half square triangles, trimmed it down a little bit, and just showed you how, the, the point of the tutorial was to show you if you don't use, if you start your fabrics and they shrink, how do you adjust the pattern? And that's what this is. And the same, the same thing. Cute little uh, label on the back using Beyond Bella. And one thing I want you to notice, can you zoom in a little bit? And this might be good, it might be bad, it's up to you. When you're looking at this quilt, because the quilting is so tight, you don't even see the hashtags. So sometimes the designs and the fabric get lost in the quilting, but that's okay. I love it. Oh, thank you, Leslie Quilts, for the super chat. She said, highlight of 2023 was our true crime episode of Inappropriate Quilters. Kimberly, you're the best. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. So this is Moda Love Charm Pack Quilt, and this one's just kind of a fun... This would be great, I think, on a round table so that it could kind of drape off because then your star would kind of shine. The next one I auctioned off. This is the 2023 Stronger Together Quilt by Michelle Ramsey. It finished at 69 inches square. We auctioned this off at the UNCF's 34th Annual Gala in Houston, and we donated a total of $15,668 with donations from all of you guys to UNCF. The fabric collection is speckled by Rashida Coleman Hill, and it was designed by Michelle Ramsey and quilted by Maggie Honeyman. Now this is kind of a cheater quilt also. We get a lot of questions about how do you use a panel? So Jocelyn designed this, it's called Simple Strips Panel Quilt, completely free pattern. It finishes at 34 by 54, and basically you take a panel and you add borders, and it's kind of like a courthouse step design. The fabric I used here is Harvest Wishes, and that's the panel, the border, and everything. And then the fabric is Deb Strain, Harvest Wishes, Moda Fabrics, quilted by Maggie Honeyman. And the label blends in here on the back. And this fabric is different than this fabric, but it would look totally fine if you um, use the same fabric. One thing I did wanna point out is you can put it slightly away. You can see this is slightly away from the corner or tuck it in the corner, whatever you want. If you tuck it in the corner, you don't have to fold these two down and it saves you time binding. This is Layer Cake Loop. This is one of my scrappy quilts. So you saw the um, low volume that I did with the economy blocks. And what I noticed when I did that is I was not using enough of my backgrounds and then I had a bunch left over. So I thought I need to come up with something to use all of my low volumes in big pieces. So I've always loved the layer cake loop pattern. I also love the layer cake lemonade pattern. But I took the layer cake loop, I made the lap size, which is bigger than this, it's 72 inches square. And um, I basically just use all kinds of low volumes and you're gonna see it kind of like, you got blues, reds, pinks, creams, whites, it's, it's a crazy hot mess. But I think it looks good all together. Now, the border, I did do length of fabric. This is from the um, 
lighthearted collection. No, this is from Hush Hush 2 from Hush Hush 2 from Riley Blake Designs. My binding is from the lighthearted collection. My backing is from the One Fine Day collection. So I just had, I always try to get my border, my binding and my backing to somehow go together. So you can see Riley Blake, Moda and Moda, it all looks great. And then we'll look at the back and see what I did on the back. It's always fun to turn it over to see what I did because I can't re even remember barely. Okay, I think it is over here. And these are little shamrocks. So this one's really cool. Basically, it's just a long vertical. And, it's, and it says my name and thankful, grateful, blessed. This is Happy Go Lucky by Sherry McConnell. This is 79 inches square. The pattern is available either as a paper pattern or a PDF pattern. This is quilted by Sarah Campbell, and Sarah Campbell also quilted my layer cake loop quilt. So 79 inches square. This is the Simply Delightful Fabric Collection by Sherry and Chelsea from Moda. The backgrounds are from that collection. Everything is from that collection, and I'm gonna show you up close my borders, and I basically just did exactly what Sherry McConnell did. So. Her website is aquiltinglife.com. Her YouTube channel is Sherry and Chelsea. And so I did, um, I did this one where I cut the setting squares bigger, setting triangles bigger and corner squares bigger, trimmed down. That way there's not a, um, you don't have to worry about anything meeting. I used an inner border, outer border binding, and my backing is a big polka dot, and I think I have a label on the back. So I thought the polka dot would be really fun. And then we picked one of the bigger, bigger um, labels to put on the back. Quilted by Maggie Honeyman. This is the Tis the Season Christmas Eve panel. This is actually Kevin's quilt. I had to find all these quilts at home and bring them. And Kevin had this one and he was like, you can't take it, it's mine. And I was like, well, I'll bring it back. So it's 58 by 73. So this is the Tis the, e Tis the Season Christmas Eve panel by Layla Boutique for Moda Fabrics. It just came, uh, like it came prepackaged. All I did was have Abby Latimer quilt this. I put C390 Platinum on the back, which is a Shannon fabric. I didn't put a label on the back. And this one, you can see the quilting is bigger. And the reason the quilting is bigger is when you use a Shannon Minky Soft fabric on the back, the quilting cannot be tied or it will scrunch up and the thread will break. So this one has, um, it's been used a lot. This is one of you guys' favorites. This is The Quilted Witch by Lori Holt. This one is 76 by 89. And this one I made exactly like her pattern. Her pattern is available in booklet form or PDF. 76 by 89. All of the fabric is from the B Dots collection by Lori Holt. And then uh, Maggie Honeyman quilted this one. And I'm gonna show you in the binding, 
we put in the pumpkin large vintage trim here and then the back is a 108 that's from a different collection than this. Maggie Honeyman quilted this one. And let's see if we have a label. Oh yeah, right here. So this one, since it's a 108, we just put it in the corner. And it says fall is my favorite color, so that kind of goes along with the Quilted Witch. The next two quilts are Christmas gifts, so now I can take them home and wrap them. Okay, this is Christopher's Christmas gift, one of them. This is the Slam Dunk pattern by Cluck Cluck Sew, so available as paper or PDF. I adjusted the size, so you can see this is three by four. I made mine four by five. The blocks right here, all this outside is from the All Star collection. These are Bella Solids. This is Bella Solid 209. This and this is Black Crossweave 12216-28. The sashing and the binding is from the All Star Collection, which matches this. That is by Stacy Itsu for Moda Fabrics. It finishes at 66 by 82. I did this quilt during a retreat. And this fabric right here is called Fireside. It's by Moda. It's similar to Shannon, but slightly different. The skew of this is 6001-23. And then I used Lori Holt's Spelling Bee book to spell his name in the Bella Solid and the um, Crossweave. And then I added a little label here. And like, like I said, when you use this type of fabric, you have to quilt bigger. So he will always know it's his. Now to go with it, I made him two pillows. So I made these at a retreat. So this is that same quilt block. I just added an inner border of the cross weave and an outer border here. And what I did was I just made it super big. Maggie Honeyman quilted the quilt and these pillows and then Teresa turned them into pillows. And basically we just make the pillow bigger and then she trims it down to what it needs to be for a pillow. Now this one was quilted also by Maggie Honeyman. This one is um, All Star Collection, Bella Solid 209 and Black Crossweave the same, 18 inches square, quilted by Maggie Honeyman. This one, I used that same spelling bee book. I used the 12 inch block instead of the six inch block. So the six inch blocks were on the back to spell his name. The 12 inch blocks is to make this pillow. It's 12 by 16. And I used the spelling bee book to make this and then I just added. And then I put a, I had a lot of leftovers of this from the quilt, put that on the back. And so he gets these also for Christmas. So that fits a twin size bed. Okay, this is Emma's Christmas gift. Now last year, Will and Peyton got quilts, so this year Christopher and Emma get quilts. This, she has a queen size bed. So this one's bigger, it's 92 by 93. I changed the layout in terms of making more blocks. It's 92 by 93, the way I did it. It normally is 70 by 73. I worked on this also at a quilt retreat. This is the Peachy Keen Collection by Corey Yoder. And then these two fabrics, this is from Peachy Keen and this is from Beyond Bella. And I will show you my mistake. So you can see throughout, it's supposed to be Beyond Bella, Peachy Keen, Beyond Bella, Peachy Keen. Well, I just messed up on the outside and just did, I don't know, I did these right, but not these. 
but it, she she will have no idea and she, I guarantee she doesn't care this is the white on white from the collection I added this just to break it up and also I think I was short when I went length of fabric so I think I had to add this this is also peachy keen this is also peachy keen now on the back I use that same fabric a different color so this is Fireside Color 22. And I also use the six inch blocks from the Spelling Bee book. Now, if I had to redo this, because her name is so big, I could have done the 12 inches. And I just used leftover fabric to make it uh, horizontal. And then this is Fireside and the Color 22. Maggie Honeyman quilted this one. And then I'm going to leave this here to show you her pillows. So I didn't have as much fabric left over as I did with Christopher. So you see Christopher's got a big pillow. I didn't have very much. I mean, I barely had enough to make these. So you can see I was inspired by the front of the quilt to make this. And you can see it's very scrappy because it's, I was just using my leftovers. And then I used uh, the six inch block. I think I didn't use the 12 inch because I didn't have enough fabric. And then Teresa turned these into pillows after Maggie Honeyman quilted them. And this one is 12 inches square and this one's eight by 10. And this one is filled with poly stuffing. So there wasn't, the other three had quilt forms, pillow forms that would fit. This one did not. So she, um, Teresa used polyfill. Also at that retreat, I worked on Moda Blockheads 5, round one. All of the block patterns are completely free on Moda's website. There's also a Facebook group called Moda Blockheads that has information on this. This just ended. I used the free blocks. I took the vintage Christmas table runner setting from page 124 and use that setting for this. This is the part one of Moda Blockheads. Part two starts in January. So mine finishes at 18 by 60. I use the Old Glory collection by Layla Boutique. I use the background from that collection, binding and backing from that collection and Maggie Honeyman quilted this one for me. And this one has a feather. Sometimes when I do patriotic, I use feathers or waves instead of um, the Baptist fan. And then the backing, I also use leftovers. And so I pieced this from my leftovers with a label in the center. And then that way when there's a seam, it's, it's broken up. You know, I don't love when my seams touch. But, you know, they have to on big quilts. And thank you to Bonnie Eisenhower for the super chat. She said, thank you for everything you do. Thank you for watching. Okay, also with this, we're going to show you this. So I was really busy at that retreat, you know. I made the table runner. And again, I had a ton of leftover scraps. Well, I needed to make something. So we, at the week before I left, I had filmed this video called Mini Patches Pillow Pattern. And... It was just fun and easy, so I used scraps left over to make this pillow. I basically did exactly like the pattern. The only thing different is I didn't do cornerstones. I just kept it the border the same. Maggie quilted it. Teresa turned it into a pillow. And then I still had fabric left over, and I was like, oh my gosh, I need more to do, right? So. I had also filmed the week before Lori's brand new vintage sunburst paper. And I just was so inspired by these. So I just whipped these up real quick. This probably took me like maybe two hours. And then Maggie Honeyman quilted both of these and Teresa put these into pillows. So it was just whatever fabric I had left over. I didn't buy anything for it. And then, oh my gosh, we're going to zoom in. This is so cute. So what you'll notice when you make this pattern is right here it becomes very bulky 
So she made a yo-yo and bought uh, two cute uh, buttons from Lori Holt, I think, and then just sewed it on. And that, that hid this. Now, I don't have anywhere for these to go. I don't, I just made these for fun. So you can see when you're looking at my stuff, I just do whatever, whenever. Now, one thing that's different with these than my other pillows is I use soft and stable on these. On the other pillows I showed you, I just use regular batting. But these, I did soft and stable. So sometimes I do soft and stable, sometimes I don't. These are gonna be decorative pillows, and so I want them to be very firm. The pillows for my kids, I'm assuming they will use, so I wanted them to be softer. And, um, Okay, so what Teresa said is she used four inches, she used a bowl, and she just she didn't use a clover template. She just made it by hand by cutting a four inch circle, uh, no templates or anything. Okay, this is also a pillow that I just came up with just for the fun of it, because you know I have a lot of time on my hands. So we had a really fun video with Camille Ross Kelly when the Lighthearted Collection came out. And she showed a ton of quilts. And she showed Daybreak, which is one of her older patterns, sewn and lighthearted it. And I fell in love and I went straight home and that night I made this pillow. So I took the Daybreak pattern, which is by Thimble Blossoms, available as paper or PDF. I made two blocks. I cut sashing and I put that here, here, and here so that it would end up 16 by 38 that way it would fit the Kimberbell bench pillow I believe basically I made it fit one of the pillows that we sell quilted by Teresa and when she did this she did half inch cross hatch and so she just did this on the Juki machine and she turned it into a pillow and I think I made this this was leftovers from here there was leftovers so I sewed that and we didn't put a name in it or actually we did I think we put it under here I don't remember what we did so really fun so with something like this you know yeah I made it because I had fun but I mean Teresa finished it so you, you I, I can't take credit for all of this um, I have a lot of help behind me also with that collection we did a video using Latifah's um, clamshell ruler. So Latifa Safer, she has a lot of glam, she has a lot of clamshell patterns. So we use the glam clam quilt pattern to make a pillow. It's 18 inches square and the tutorial video is called Trying Something New, First Time Clamshell Quilt with Clammy Ruler. This is the Lighthearted Collection and the binding and the backing are also from the Lighthearted Collection. And this was quilted by Maggie Honeyman, and this one was using um, Soft and Stable because it's gonna be a decorative pillow, and Soft and Stable will, will stand up more firm, and it'll be more stiff, and it'll last longer. This next quilt is from the Simply Jelly Roll book. This, you need the book for the pattern. Book is by It's So Emma. And then on our blog, you need to let, you need to print this out and it'll tell you exactly what to make from the book. It finishes at 80 inches square. This is all lighthearted collection and this does use the lighthearted white on white. And this was really fun to make, the border also lighthearted, and then on the back I put a pink. And let me see if I did a label. Okay, we put the label in the center. That was quilted by Maggie Honeyman. Now this next one was an oopsie. So, this is called Split Strips by Fat Quarter Shop. So first, 
These are the two table runners that I came up with. Table toppers, and then this is the table runner. So when you look at this, you can see the block is from here to here. From here to here. So Jocelyn gave me a challenge and it didn't go as planned. The video is called, This Quilt Did Not Go As Planned, My Mistake and How I Changed This Jelly Roll Split Strips Quilt into a quilt, into two projects. So this was supposed to be a quilt, but when I did the video, I didn't pay attention to the direction I drew the diagonal line, whether it was horizontal or vertical. So because I did that, when I went to lay out my quilt on my design wall, it didn't work. So instead of throwing things away or buying more fabric, I just changed it up. So now I have two table toppers and a table runner to put who knows where. And um, this is uh, all flower pot collection by Layla Boutique. The background is also from that collection and quilted by Maggie Honeyman. And then just because it's the end of the year, I'm going to show you a cute picture of Piggy this week. So they have a party every like season for uh, a daycare and that is his uh, picture. And it's so funny because they always tell me he does not want to do this. I'm like, no, of course he doesn't. He's a dog. He, he doesn't know what he's doing. Anyway, I just thought y'all would want to see that. Oh, and then this, he was puppy of the week this week. So he is, that's all about Piggy. He's so cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna answer your questions. You guys can guess how many quilts that is. I will tell you in a second. How close is the cross that cross hatch on the stronger together quilt? I think it's more like one inch. That one, since we auctioned it off, I don't remember, but I think it's one inch. My labels are all, I purchase them monthly. I'm in the Sweetwater Label Club. And um, I think their website is sweetwaterco.com. But it's a label club. I've been in it for years. I pay for it. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. And then um, I get them and I just keep them in a big bag. And at one point I ran out and I had to buy some of their label sheets. Do I keep all the quilts or do I donate them? It. I don't really donate them. I'll auction them for charity. Um, but some of them I keep for my house. A lot of them I keep for my house. A lot of them I keep for my kids. A lot of them I'll gift. This year, I would say six are being gifted. Um, I haven't even finished Christmas shopping. But yes, a lot of them I keep. We use them to decorate Fat Quarter Shop, you know, the break room and the walls and my couches at home. And so a lot of them are used here. It kind of depends um, how attached I am to it. What quilt did I enjoy making the most? Okay, that's easy. Barn Star, Barn Star Sampler. And the reason why is every time I went to make something, it could be hard, it could be easy, but it was stars and I love stars. And that's not a designer that I have ever made anything with before. So it was fun to do something that was a different designers and fun to color and get it all um, put together. Do I work on more quilts, more than one quilt at a time? Okay. So I talked about this a little bit yesterday on a podcast that's going to be coming up on Sherry and Chelsea's channel. I work on about 20 quilts at one time, but each day I will only work on one quilt. In the past, I would try to do, you know, a little bit of this quilt, a little bit of this quilt, a little bit of this quilt. Well, then I started doing the wrong, I don't know if Denise even remembers this, but I started sewing like the wrong pattern to the wrong fabric and I couldn't keep it straight. So I have to only do one at a time or else I just get so confused. Um, so generally what I do is I will plan what I'm going to do that day and I will um, just decide how much I can get done. And if I have two hours, I can get a little bit done. If I have eight hours, I can get a lot done. So I'll pick the size of project I'm working on based on the size of time and also when it's due. So I'm already working on 2024. Tips for getting the stripe border straight. So I would say use your ruler and just make sure if you're folding it, 
that when you're folding it, it is straight with either the horizontal line or the vertical line. And then when you put your ruler, make sure that your line on your ruler is with the fold on your fabric and just cut carefully. The blue backing on the fruit salad quilt. It is from the fruit cocktail collection. I'm not sure if it's still in stock or not. I, it probably isn't. This is a great question, Elizabeth. What pre-cut do you pick up for your stash? Hands down, layer cake, always. Do you put the year on your labels? No, so the, year, the, the labels just have my name. What, when was the inappropriate quilt crime broadcast? So that was on, um, you can find that on like Apple or anywhere you find your podcast and it was probably in the fall. Inappropriate quilters. What batting did I use on the quilt? So all my quilts, I use 80-20. Basic batting, 80-20, doesn't matter what brand. And then it's only the pillows I'm gonna use to display that I will use the By Annie Soft and Stable. Are the labels on the top of the backing on the top or pieced in and quilted in? Okay, so sometimes they're put on after it's quilted. Most of the time they're put on before it's quilted. It kind of just depends on how busy I am, how busy Teresa is, how fast we need to get it to the quilter. So it all just kind of, it just kind of depends because it's kind of an afterthought. I do sell the fireside fabrics. Does Piggy have his own quilt? Yes, he does. Okay, so um, Colleen Holt made it for me. Well, made it for him. And, and she asked me, she said, can I make you pick, pick a quilt? And I was like, sure. I thought she was just making him like a block. She made him a whole quilt. And then I felt guilty. I was like, oh my God, she made a whole quilt. It's big, it's, it's a pugs. It's, it's six, nine blocks of pugs, applique, which I can't do. He sits right on it. He loves it. And I just don't even know how he knows it's his, but he just sits right on it. We will be ordering Tilda Jubilee. Anything that's Tilda, we always order. Okay, so guys, I want you to remember about our thread giveaway because I want all of you to be able to enter. You'll go to the Jolly Jabber blog for that. I want to thank everyone who works at Fat Quarter Shop and everyone who purchases from Fat Quarter Shop for all their hard work. And that was 41 quilts. Thank you for a wonderful year. This is the last live stream of the year. I would love for you to comment and let me know what your favorite quilt was. Um, so fun getting to know all of you. So fun sewing with you. And I can promise you in the next two weeks, I'm going to be sewing so much stuff that we are going to have so much fun in 2024 because I'm going to have so many quilts and it's going to be a great year. So let's look forward to 2024 and I'll see you then.